Hi everybody, this is Brendan here at Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internets. And today, we're going to show you how to do a wheel bearing replacement. We're going to be doing this on both a front and rear wheel on the old vintage Hondas, so 350s, 360s, 450s, etc. On the front, we're going to be doing it on a disc brake wheel because it is a lot more difficult than the drum brake wheel. And we're also going to do it on the rear wheel. And the most important thing besides changing the bearings out, we're going to show you how to remove the bearing retainers without any special tools. So let's just jump on in. So we're going to start off with the wheel bearing replacement on this front disc brake wheel. Uh, I think this is off of a 360 Honda, it's an 18 inch wheel so it's probably a 360 and it's got a 4 bolt uh, rotor on it. And the reason we want to do the disc brake and show you guys the disc brake is because it's one of the more complicated front wheels. The same techniques we're going to use to remove the bearings will apply to all the different types of hubs or wheels you might have on the bikes, but the retainers are what make it a little bit more difficult. Again, if you have drum brakes up front, it's going to be a lot easier to do because you don't have to remove these retainers, but on this brake ones you do. So there is wheel bearing number one for this side to take out. And now we have to remove this retainer here take out wheel bearing number two and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna take a marker I'm gonna highlight some stuff to show you guys so the way that Honda puts these retainers on you got these four kind of square notches here to hold the retainer in place also what they did was they took a punch and they put a little punch mark around the, the where the retainer and the hub go together, to, it's called peening it, and this is to keep the retainer from backing out on the hub. Now, in order to remove this, you have to drill out the little peen marks, and I'm gonna highlight them right here with the red marker so you guys can see them a little better. There's one there, and we got one right there. There's little indentation dots, and the rear ones have it as well. So before we can even try to remove this little four-prong retainer thing, we have to drill the peen marks ever so slightly. And we're gonna do this with an eighth inch drill bit and a regular drill. So get that set up and we'll, we'll actually drill those out. And the key is on these peen marks, we're not gonna go very deep. We're just gonna take a little bit off the surface so um, they're not distorted. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit here. Do yourself a favor, if you don't have a nice sharp drill bit, to do this job, go to the hardware store and buy a brand new one. They're cheap. It's gonna make the job a lot easier. Let's start with this one first. And we're not gonna need a whole lot of material coming off of here. That's it. You see I'm not going crazy with the drill, going crazy fast but we're getting nice pieces of metal come out because it's a bit sharp. All right, my next major step, take some penetrating oil, blaster, and we're going to just get that all nice and soaked in there. All right, so this has been sitting for, you know, 10 minutes or so with the penetrating oil on it, and we're gonna come in with a heat gun and uh, get this whole thing heated up nice and hot before we even try to remove this. So that's the key to getting this stuff apart is the heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun already and you're messing with these old bikes, you need to go get, buy one. Okay, so I've been heating up this bearing hub retainer for, you know, a while, the heat gun. Again, it, it's kind of hard to get things too hot with the heat gun because the, the aluminum will expand. Anyway, I'll put that down, try to work kind of quick. So here is my, my improv tool to take this apart. 
There's a pair of needle nose pliers, a set of extra hands that come from out of, out of, uh, I'm pretty sure I made it a little bit better. Right thank you for helping Caleb. Ready? Yeah. Let's see if we can get this to pop loose. Nope. Alright, we're going to try this method. Let's see if I can get this to pop out. At least pop loose. Felt something go. It moved a lot. It moved. All right, we broke it loose. All right, let's see if we can get this to pop loose here. I'm just gonna do it by hand. There we go. Just need a little bit of inspiration. There is our bearing retainer. Got a seal on that side. We're gonna drive the seal out. And what we'll do is while we have this out, we'll kind of deburr where the drill marks were and we'll kind of clean up the uh, edges here with the file. So we can either replace this or reuse it. We do have replacements available um, on the website. So we will give you the part number below. Now it's time for my favorite part of the bearing removal. Because now we have the, the bearing open or at least the, the cover off back to the heat gun and I'm going to keep heating this thing up so back to the waiting game I'm going to turn the heat gun off I'm literally going to take my wheel now well, didn't break loose it's all right Got it flipped over, we got a punch. What I'm doing is I'm getting the inside edge of that bearing with the punch at an angle. It should pop pretty loose quick. There it goes. Ooh, it's hot. And uh, if you might note, see that's all gooey? That's all the old bearing grease that's in there from the factory. Uh, the factory bearings only had a seal on the outer side. They're a single slided seal and the inside was greasy. If they're in good shape you can clean them up and repack them but it's probably better just to replace them with better bearings which is what we're going to do on this one. So I'll put that one aside. Here we have like a bearing spacer that goes in between the bearings and the hub. Right there. Flip the wheel over we do the same thing. Get it hot. He comes off, put it aside. We'll see if this one will just fall out. Not quite. It's okay. Same drill. I'm gonna use my punch. It's gonna get on the edge of the bearing here. I bet you'll just tap right on out. There's bearing number two. Came right out. Again, I didn't I didn't hit it really hard with the punch. I just tapped on it. And that secret is that um, the heat makes all the difference right there with the removal. So uh, make sure you heat them up. Sometimes they just fall out. They get so they, they fit in there, they fall out. But that one needed a little bit of a tap. But again, I didn't hit it real hard. And that's the key. If you're hitting it real hard, uh, you're doing something wrong. So I'm going to show you a couple of details here of the hub before we actually go back together with everything. Um, I want to put the bearing, the first bearing I put in, I want to put it on this side that has the retainer on it. And the reason I want to do that is because the bearing has this, there's a lip here, right in there, and see we, that the bearing is going to set down and seat into. On the other side here, I don't have the lip. The bearing could technically go through the hub and into the inside of the hub. Why flip that over? Can you see that? And that see how there's no there's no lip here at all. So you could technically drive the bearing in too far, and it falls inside the hub. This one relies on the spacer and the position of the other bearing to put that in the right place. So make sure that we're going to put this side in first. Uh, another detail you might see here. You see there's a little notch at the bottom. And there's also a, a notch at the top. What those are for. 
is if you are using the punch to draw the bearings out, that notch is so you can get the get behind the edge of the bearing, the outer edge of it, and knock the bearing out from you know left to right, left to right, left to right. That's put in there from the factory to make the bearing removal easier. But if you heat it up like we did, you saw how easy it can really be done with minimal effort. So since that strategy works so well, we're going to heat the hub back up again. While we're already filming, I went ahead and cleaned up our, our spacer collar, and I kind of rebend up one of the uh, tanks to make it easier to install on the hub. Clean up our driver for our uh, speedo gear, put all that stuff aside, and also cleaned out the center of the hub here, got all that old grease and goo out of it, and so we'll go ahead and start to put the new bearing in. I've been heating the hub up here for a hot minute or 10, and they're getting it really nice and warm and toasty, and I'm gonna turn the heat gun off. What you didn't know is off camera is we threw uh, the new bearing in the freezer to make it nice and cold, and this is getting hot. I'm gonna use a socket. This is a one and a quarter inch socket, which fits the outer diameter of the bearing perfectly as a driver to drop it in. But you know, this might be expanded enough that the bearing just falls right in place. So let's see here. Ooh, that is warm, but you see it's a lot more flush. Ooh, that's hot. So that one went in a little bit tougher than I thought. Um, it happens sometimes, it just has to do with the interface fit of the bearing and the part you're pressing it into. Uh, however, regardless, heating it up and actually having the bearing chilled makes things a lot easier to go together because of thermal expansion and contraction of the metals and the parts. Um, I can flip it over in the back. I can see that the bearing is fully seated on the uh, the lip or on the, the seat of the bearing race. So that's good because we're gonna need that in place to put the other bearing in uh, in position. So we'll go ahead and do that one next. Okay, so I'm hitting the other side here with the heat gun again for some more hot minutes. You can feel the heat coming off this thing, it's hot. Put it aside. Other bearing, straight out of the freezer. But first, I need to install my uh, spacer. We got some small prongs and some large prongs. The small prongs are gonna go down towards the other one, and the large prongs are gonna face upward. I have to make sure I got it dropped onto the other bearing just right. There it is, right there. You'll know. All right, let's see if this one drops in. I can feel it. Look at that. Like magic. That's what I was talking about. So that one went right in, and it hit the top of the retainer. You can see it right there. It's perfect. So, we'll cool off. We'll flip it the. We'll flip the wheel over, and then we'll do the install of the uh, the retainer here. All right, I'm going to try to reuse this retainer over again. You can also replace it. I'm going to try to clean up some of the marred edges with a file. All right, this is nice and hot too, all ready to go in. And I'm going to take some anti-seize compound here, our favorite tool for old motorcycles. And I'm going to anti-seize up the threads here on the retainer so it goes together nice and smooth and easy. This anti-seize is a thread lubricant. Now when this is right, it should go pretty easy. You should be able to do most of it by hand without any more resistance. If it's not going easy, you got some kind of burr or something that's causing the, uh, the retainer to hang up. It should go pretty easy. So here's another trick. This is just a piece of aluminum right here that I cut. And since we have the seal out of here, the aluminum acts like a big flathead screwdriver blade here where I can turn the retainer with. 
a uh, piece of steel would work too. Just something to get you that screwdriver effect. All right, I'm feeling like I'm getting close to seated. Get this off so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna do one last thing to help tighten it up. I can tell that I'm in the right spot because they're, the, the retainer and the hub are, are fairly level with each other. Taking my uh, aluminum piece, I'm taking a couple of adjustable wrenches here, in the groove, and then turn it until I feel it seat all the way. I don't need to go crazy tight with it. That's probably it right there. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually. I'm going to put another peen in here, just like the factory one had. So I'm going to use a center punch. And that's going to help keep that from coming loose. Wipe out that excess anti-seize out of here. And my last step for this side is to install my uh, hub seal bearing. And it looks like I can just push that out with my fingers. Real easy, just like that. Let me tap on it just gently with the socket. That is in there. All right, that uh, wheel bearings are installed. Other than re you know putting the the rotor back on and the the other pieces of the hub, that is uh, would be a complete install of the bearings. Just reassembling the other parts in reverse order. So. Uh, that's the front hub, and that's the hardest parts. Everything else I think you guys can get on your own. Uh, let's go to the back hub and do a back wheel and show you how to take the retainer off on the back wheel because it's different. So while you got this off, this is the Speedo Drive. Go ahead and clean it, re-lube it, and put a new seal in. Uh, the seal comes in the uh, bearing kit. Pry the seal out right here with the screwdriver. Clean out the old grease, and pack it with some fresh bearing grease, and you'll be good to go. All right, so what we got here is the a back wheel off of probably like a 360. Actually, yeah, yeah I think it's a 360. Anyway, uh, 350, 450, whatever. They're all going to be about the same. Uh, the only difference between the small bikes and the larger bikes is going to be the size of the bearing retainer, like that. And so here's a larger one for a larger bike. Same idea. They're just different diameters. Uh, replacements are available for most of these. Anyway. Um, a little different construction from the uh, from the front. However, it is also like the front, though it is peened in place. So we're going to go through the same exercise of removing uh, the couple of peens. And this one actually has four peens on it. It's got one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now I've seen some bikes that have this back thing, this peened in place. I've also seen them where they don't have it peened. So. It's just going to depend on your bike. Uh, this particular one actually has a crack in it, like right there. See it, but anyway, I would replace this one uh, with a new one after taking it out. But uh, first order of business is to drill, a, drill the peens out, much like we did in the front. All right, four peens are drilled, uh, which means they should break loose pretty easily. We got to take this out. Now, much like the front, there was a special spanner tool that went in place here. We don't have it, so we are going to improvise with some common things you can find at the hardware store. Because I, I get it, most of you are not going to be doing this type of repair over and over again. You can do it one time on your bike and that's going to be it. But we can set this up to make it easier than the factory did to actually take off if you need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these holes here and we're gonna tap them. We're gonna tap them to an M6 thread. And while this, this piece is not very thick and below it's a seal, we're gonna replace the seal of the kit with the bearings. And uh, the holes here are already the right size hole to tap an M6 thread into. So follow along, this will make sense later. So this is a M6 by one tap. Uh, just bought this at the local hardware store. It's not very much, maybe six bucks. And I do have a tap wrench, which is just a few bucks more. Much easier to use. I'm trying to do it with like an open, I mean, uh, adjustable wrench. So 
you know, if, buying a tap and die set is a good thing to have. I think this whole thing was maybe 10 bucks to, to buy this tool, so it ain't too expensive. Also, if you look on the tap here, the end is kind of flat and not pointy. Uh, it's called a bottoming tap, so keep an eye out for one that has this kind of bull nose that's flat here versus a point on it, because we're not going to be going into these holes very deep. Quick tip, before you actually try to tap the holes in the uh, retainer, you're going to have to use a drill, the 1364 drill bit, to drill through the seal that's underneath it. Otherwise, the tap is not going to be able to go in deep enough to actually cut threads. So drill through the seal first. It's not a big deal because you'll get a new seal in the, uh, the bearing kit. Our, our goal is to try to get these bolts in here so we can use them as pins. We did before. Back to the heat waiting game. So we've been heating this thing up for a while. You can actually see the smoke come out because we're cooking the seal in there and whatever other crap's in there too. And uh, Turn this off, go to the side. Look at that. Hands, hands come in. Yeah, you, know, you could turn the wheel up on its side to do this as well. And uh, that is how we're going to give this a try. Here we go. Look at that. but it's out. Now that you have this bearing retainer out, the removal of the wheel bearings is just like it was on the front wheel. Heat up the hub and tap the bearings out from either side. They might even fall out when they get hot enough. Uh, do note on the back wheels, there is usually more than one spacer. There's sometimes two spacers. So make sure you got all the spacers before you put the new bearings in because one of them, for example, the 360 lives on the inner race of the bearing here. So make sure you have all the spacers before you put it back together. Also, while you have uh, this piece out or while you have a new one, go ahead and tap all four holes to M6 uh, with your new tap because that would make it easier to put on in the future and to take off in the future should you have to take it off. Uh, just a quick, quick tip while you got it there. All right, so that's kind of the whole process on what it takes to change out of wheel bearings, whether it be a front wheel with a disc brake or a rear wheel. Now they both have bearing retainers. That's kind of the tricky part to getting them out. Getting them out. So I hope uh, this made it a little bit easier without any special tools and things you can find around the shop or at the local hardware store. Again, thanks for watching. This is Brendan with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via the website, and of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time.